We're on our last page, page eight, and welcome back, by the way, we're in part three. Our first pre-cut is seven and a quarter by seven and seven eighths, and we called it a fold out. We laid this on our scoring board so we were seven and seven eighths across. We scored it at a half inch and five eighths inch. Our next pre-cut is a little bit different than what we've done previously. This one's our spaced pocket. It's four and a half by six and a quarter. And when you were scoring, you noticed that we have two score lines over here, two here, two down here. So what we did first was we laid this on our scoring board so we were four and a half inches across. We scored at a half and five eighths. We then turned this so we were now six and a quarter across. We scored at a half, five eighths, five and five eighths, and five and three quarters. We're going to assemble this spaced pocket first. Now, we know about cutting out corners, but what we're going to do is, I think you can see this little score line. Down here you have an inside and outside score line. We're going to go to the inside and cut all the way up to the top score line. And we will cut that square out. Okay? So I think I'm going to maneuver this so you can see a little better. So we'll do the same over here. We're going to come to the inside score line. See, out and in. And we'll cut up to the top score line. And we're just going to cut that little square out. So now we're going to fold on all those score lines. And this creates more room in these pockets because it's spaced out. Okay, so we've done that. Now what I want you to do is push your side in so it is, when you go like this, it's flat. We're gonna do that over here too. And what we're going to do is we're gonna bring up the bottom and your bottom should line up with the side of your fold in over here. So it's the same, same um, idea. It's just we've got some spacing in there. So I'll do one at a time. So I've got this one lined up with the side over here. And then this one's going to line up with the side. And just make sure you bring up that bottom when you're doing it so it lays flat. So if you lay it down, it might be a little bit easier for you to make sure you've got that flat on the bottom. Okay, we're going to set that off to the side. We're going to get into our main decorative page. In your paper pack, you will find this print. On the back, it's the seashells. We're going to turn it sideways. The blue is over here. We're going to measure over seven and a quarter inches and cut. We'll just measure over nine inches and cut. Here is our base page. And we're going to grab our fold out and we're just going to fold on those score lines. And we're going to attach it. So the outside, here's our flap, is going to be off to the right. That outside score line will pinch and crease and we will hook this on. And now we're going to push back and we're going to place some magnets. We have one set of magnets left. And what we're going to do is we are going to start with placing this one. We're going to come in to the side about a good inch 
and place it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to close this and we're going to make sure that our side is feels pretty flat. We're going to flip our piece completely over and the mate's going to find itself. The adhesive is going to be here. So we're just going to lift it, place a little bit of glue. Well, that's a lot of glue actually. And I'm going to just clean that up a little bit. And we'll leave that on until it's time to place it in our book. All right, we're going to carefully open that up and we're going to find our paper for in here. In your paper pack, you will have this print and on the back, we will have this. We're going to turn it sideways. We're going to measure over seven inches and cut. Now we're going to measure over six and seven eighths and cut beautiful print. Now if you'd rather place it down like this, you can. I'm going to have this side up as a nice little background and I'm going to place that. I'm just going to glue that right on down. That'll give me a nice little border over there. Great place to put a photograph. So this is a great place just to plant your photos. Let's find our paper for this. We're going to use up some short scraps to cover this. And what you're going to find is this piece. On the back, it looks like this. Right now, this is five and a quarter inches wide by seven inches long. It's perfect. We don't have to do anything. Don't glue it down. Just lay it down here. Next piece is this. And this is three inches wide and probably about seven and a quarter inches long. So we do need to trim that down to be the same as this, seven. So we'll measure over seven inches and cut. So these should be the same. First one we're going to lay down is this one. And we'll just center that, leave yourself a brown border. And then the other one we're going to glue down to the top of this. Now, if you'd rather go like this, you can, but I found that this looks like it matches up pretty good. And we will place that and match it up with that one. Okay. Oop, I have some adhesive from the book on that. There we go. Let's get our spaced pocket. It goes right here. We'll just place that and I'm going to come up maybe a quarter inch from the bottom, place it in the center there as best I can. And I'm going to try and get in there with my tool to get down the sides and everything. The pack, you will find this print and on the back it looks like this. So our first cut, we're going to measure over four and seven eighths and cut. So this is what you should have. We're going to turn it sideways. We'll measure over three and three quarters and cut. Let's place that down. That should give you just a little bit of a craft border on the sides. And of course, we want it along the top. So let's glue this down. Now, if you prefer to have that, that would look really good too. Now I'm going to have that either or. And we'll carefully burnish that. Let's grab this out of our reserves and this well we're going to cut out and around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to glue that down to some craft cardstock and then we'll cut out and around that. And I'll show you what mine looks like as soon as I'm done. This is what mine looks like. I'm going to grab some leaves as well and a flower and I have cut a piece of jute uh, twine whatever you want to call it and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue a strip that fits side to side right across the bottom here just for something different you don't have to I'm 
the leaves I'm just going to glue down and we do have one more piece to the puzzle here before we finish up or maybe two pieces but I saw a piece I wanted to use you don't have to use your leaves or if you ran out and don't want to make more you don't have to but I am to put some green in there On your cut apart sheet, you will see the seashell. And we do not need to back this. We're just going to cut it out. Okay, I got the seashell. I think I'm just going to glue that right here. And now I'm going to glue the whale down. I think I'll use the fabric tack. the flower. I'm going to stick right there. Oh, I should have used my other glue. That's okay. I think that looks pretty good. I hope you like it too. Adds a little something. You know, I might add something else here really quick. And I think I'm going to add another piece of that jute right across here. So I think I'm going to do that really quick. And there's just enough room to bring it down low enough. There it goes. And everything's got to dry. I do like that. And here's a little piece. I have a scrap. I'll just knot that a little bit. And I think I'll just glue that right on down. So this is going to take a moment to dry for sure. I think that looks pretty good. When this dries, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to turn this over. We're going to apply score tape around the outside like a picture frame, one down the middle, two on either side, and we will plant this in our book together. I have the backing off. Don't forget to remove your score tape or the uh, backing from your magnet. So we're going to place this. We'll try to even it up at the top and bottom of this, but be mindful where your hinge is. So you can see on our inner uh, page cover of this that we marked the 8 on, that I think I'm just going to bring it to the edge of that, where that hits, and it's clear enough away, and I'm going to do my best to get this on straight. And I think that's good enough. And we will burnish. Oops, there's, be careful your magnet. I got a little crazy with my tool. And a functional spaced out pocket so you can get in quite a bit there. All right, we are finished up with that. Let's flip it to the front. We're going to start reinforcing the hinges. In your reserves, you will find this piece. It is 12 inches long and six and a half inches wide. And the first thing we're going to do is turn it sideways we're going to measure over seven and seven eighths and cut. Mm -hmm. This piece over here, go ahead and just set that to the side in case we need that. And I'm just going to flip it around where my border is brown over this way. What we're, go what we're going to do is we're going to cut four half inch strips. So measure over half inch cut, measure over again, keep going until you have four half inch strips. So you have these, and actually if you turn them over, it's going to give us a little bit of a pattern. So with this piece, what I want you to do, 
This is what we were cutting on. What I'd like you to do is measure over 3 eighths and cut, measure over again 3 eighths and cut. We may need those. So these two 3 eighths strips I want you to set aside. The ones that we want to work with right now are the half inch. And if you notice, here is your hinge, and then here's the hinge over here. You can use the white if you'd like, or you can use with the colored side. It is up to you. I'm going to use where I have just a little bit of color on here facing up. But this would look good too. So what's going to happen is, when we're done, you can lay all these down. So you can see it like this, or you can have just a little bit of color. And I'm going to go with the color. We're going to use our glue for this. And before I apply glue, I want to show you something. When you do that, you will notice your book is 8 inches. The idea of this is to lay it down. It will come over the edge of your, your page hinge. It's going to fit right in between, not on this hinge, but it's going to fit right in between. And you're going to want to center that evenly, top and bottom. So you may only see about a sixteenth inch of your thing, but it's coming over the edge of your hinge. And that is the idea. Once we set one, then we can line up the other ones on the other pages. And this helps to reinforce those hinges. So I'm going to lay my first one, making sure I'm not on the hinge. Okay, I have that down. Really burnish it down really good. We do have a cross piece that we will cut, but for now we're just going to get this going. And you'll clean up any glue. Just make sure down here is really down good because that's what's going to help hold and reinforce down that hinge. We're going to keep going. Now what you'll want to do when you do that is you're going to line up the top of this one with the top of that one. So I'm going to try not to get, and don't get it on the hinge, remember, but that should fit evenly in between your two hinges here. We left a 5 8 inch, 5 8 spacing in between our pages. So if this is a half inch, this will fit in there nicely. So the key is to keep these even. They will get covered, so if you don't, but just make sure if you have any glue seeping out, you clean that up immediately. So we're going to continue on and lay our pieces, again, in between the hinges. Just be mindful of the glue if it squirts out the side. It's easier to use glue so that you can maneuver your piece, that's for sure. Score tape is too unforgiving for something like that. Now, what you can do, now these 3 8 I wasn't sure if I was going to use them or not but you can by laying it here. I'm not going to use these uh, for what I was thinking to do, but I can use one of these and I'll cut it down more. So here's the top and what I'm going to do is I am going to place this down and you'll want to do the same so that the edge of this matches up with the edge up here. Then what you're going to want to do is just bring it across and try and look to see where that last one lays. And you're going to use your pencil. So I think, and I can lift this up just a little more so I can see. And right about here, so there's one, and I'm just going to cut that. That's, I, I think I can get that straight. There's one. Now I'm going to do the same down here. Line that up to where I can see it's straight, straight. All this does is kind of finish off those little raw edges at the top. Now 
Now, because each one of us, here's my pieces, because each one of us may have laid our pages in maybe a little higher here, maybe a little lower, this is where you are going to lay this down. That's not the right one. There we go. Lay that down. And you don't want to put it up flush against your bottom of your pages. Leave yourself a little room. And you're going to take your pencil just below the top, uh, the bottom of your page, your chipboard, make your pencil mark. Now this is hard to cut on your paper cutter like the type I have. I'm going to freehand this. I just need a strip. And I'm just going to try to keep it as straight as possible. Take my time. I'll get it halfway decent here. You just need a little strip. That strip is going to lay right across the bottom without interfering with your pages to turn. So that one's good, and I'm going to lay it down. And this just crosses the top, kind of like a T almost. Okay, so I have that one down. I'm going to flip this around so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to do the same thing. But this will help reinforce to keep those page hinges down on something that is so heavy and larger. So now it looks like this. Now with those ones, what I was thinking I could do, now this was an idea, and I still might do it, is I can always lay them right here and then cut a narrow strip going across and border this if I wanted, but I think I'm just going to leave this alone. I think it looks good how it is. Alright, we finished up. Let's grab for our dritz. And the piece that we needed was the hook. And you should have some sort of ribbon. So what you want to do, here it is sitting like this, is you're going to take, I have glue all over me by the way, sorry. What you're going to want to do is you have your hook laying like this where the bottom part hooks around. You're going to feed it up through the little eye there and down through the other side. Now the only thing I can tell you about the, the dritz is that sometimes they do not close off these little prongs all the way. If you want to get some pliers out, you can. Most of the time, I just leave it alone unless it's like a big gap. So I'm just pulling these now to where they are even, even tails. So the best way to do this is after you get all your pitcher mats in there. And you want to be able to leave a little bit of room there because you're going to be adding some stuff in there. You don't want to cinch it right now because you'll never be able to get your what you need in there. And I left just enough space in here for our stuff. So I have it hooked. And for me, I'm just going to come straight out from the side. So I have this sitting here. And I'm wrapping it around to here. You may want to grab your little binder clips at this point. And I'm going to grab one of mine. So once you can see, I have that right around. And there's still some slack. Okay, I'm checking. I still have room in here. And that's not too tight. So I have it like this. Now hot glue helps. You just got to be very careful. I'm going to use the fabric tack and then I'm going to use some binder clips. So I have it here and what I can do is unhook it now. Make my life a little easier. 
and I'm just going to peel back a little and I'm going to apply some of this underneath to get this started. I have another layer here. I'm going to peel back. Just take your time and I'm going to get underneath. So I got that. Now what you can do is make it so you have some tails kind of and kind of add some more glue if you'd like. I am just going to snip mine off. On our, on our cut apart sheet we have some beautiful roses here that would cover that up perfectly and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to cut out and around this. And I don't think I'm going to back this. I think it'll be fine because the whole thing gets glued down over the ribbon. You see, I could add some something back here like this if I wanted to. I think I might. If you don't have any, it looks good without. So I'm just going to clip off a little bit here. And I'll use fabric tack for this because it's going down over fabric. Just make sure you get the edges of this really good so it does not snag. And it'll stay nice and flat. Unless you want to put a, um, perhaps you just, you want to use a regular one. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. There will be more to come in the future as I start getting down to designing more stuff, folios, albums, and I have another paper in mind to use for my next project. Happy crafting, everybody. Have a wonderful week.